the American Civil War was a war between the North and the South, between those who advocated for the practice of slavery and those who opposed it. Delaware was considered a border state. While there were slaveholders in Delaware, there were also free black communities like Polk Town. Polktown families lived in their own homes, farmed their own land, and worshipped in their own church. Polktown is a remarkable cultural and social institution. It was a community of free African Americans, which means they were once enslaved. They were always on the periphery of the white community, never integrated in the white community. We know that at an early time, they were guides in the marshes. In the census records, the soldiers that I researched were listed as laborers or farmers. They were active in their trade. They didn't travel much outside of the town. That was rare. But one of the things that amplified the experience of the community of Polktown was these soldiers, they went to Texas, they went to Florida, they were all over the South, they were everywhere. And I think that recent research is showing that it's really expanded their frontiers intellectually, socially, and uh, politically, most importantly. Sometimes, History can be hiding in plain sight. This is what happened a while back when a group of kids went exploring in a marsh just outside of Delaware City. The marsh happened to be on the other side of a branch canal, not too far from Polk Town. Hidden in the thick growth of reeds were some strange looking rocks, clues that would lead to an important discovery. For the rocks, as it turned out, were actually the headstones of the graves of African-American soldiers, United States Colored Troops, as they were called, who enlisted and fought for the Union Army in the American Civil War. Today, this landscape has been fully refurbished by the Friends of the African Union Church Cemetery a determined group of church members and interested neighbors that came together to restore and preserve this sacred spot. After tireless research, historian David Orr has uncovered much of the military history of the soldiers buried there. Well, this is James Elbert Stone, and James Elbert Stone gives us his military record because all we need is his name and his unit. And in the National Archives, where the military records are kept, is his entire military record. Veteran storyteller and historic interpreter Willis Phelps has created a living history piece of this project. When this grave was found outside of Delaware City, and they let Dr. Dave Orr know about it, Dr. Orr got in touch with me, and we went out and we checked, and we found James Elbert. That was the first they found that tombstone. This is clear, you could see the writing on it. It was in fairly good shape. And he looked, and he said, let's check. And we checked around, and we found four more headstones, some not as legible, but they were Civil War soldiers, colored troops. And when Dr. Orr did his research and told me about Private Albert, it was like, my God, he said, we got to tell this story. I played cowboys, I played revolutionary soldiers, but he was a Civil War soldier I could identify with up real close. And as I read his story and the story of the other four, it was like, this is something I, and just talking about it to folks turned into an interpretation. They, they were getting it when I talked about it, but it was like something was missing. So we added a little bit of personality to it, if you will.
Come on in. Have a seat with me. I want to tell you a story. My story. When I was a young fellow in the Union Army, Private James H. Elbert, C Company, from Delaware. I'm a Delaware boy. And don't you know, I joined the Union Army to fight, to be a soldier, and I learned to do this. Me and my trusty rifle here. James Elbert was likely a farmer until, at age 24, he decided to leave Polk Town as other young black men were doing. I, I was in the field, me and Hoppin' John, my mule. We was plowing up the field. And I looked up to the big house, and I looked, and Mama was standing there with her hands on her hip. So lickety-split. <laughs> I runs up to the house, and I say, Mama, what, 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 what be the matter? Well, I look at Mama, and the tears be coming down her cheek. Lord Jesus, mama don't cry for nothing. I said, mama, what, what be the matter? And she looked at me and she said, James, that Crawford boy and that Alex Draper boy, they done gone off and joined the fighting. On January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing enslaved African Americans and allowing former slaves to enlist in the paid service of the Union Army. Well, Mama looks at me. She knows what I'm gonna do. She puts her head down. The tears are still coming down. I feel right bad, but Mama says, all right, James, all right. And she points down the pike and says, go on. As this brutal war continued, free black men were actively recruited, encouraged by the promise of financial reward. Young men in Polk Town, like James Elbert, heeded the call. And I left Mama right there on the porch crying. And off I went. Them boys is in there, get a piece of paper, they sign it, give it back to the recruiter. He looks at it, he signs off on it, and he goes out and joins the ranks. He, he said, can you read that paper? Uh, I said, no, sir. Like many of his generation, when he enlisted, James Elbert had to make his mark with an X because he couldn't sign his name. Elbert had never learned to read or write. James H. Elbert used now a private in the United States Army. Get out there in them ranks. And he uh, joined up, went to North Philadelphia, where the six United States colored troops were being trained at, at Lucretia Mott's estate. Camp Wim Penn. And don't you know, they had us come from all over the place in Delaware all across the country to William Penn, and they trained us to be soldiers. And the next thing you know, they put us all on the steamer and sent us way down the pike. Well, we know we're going off to the fighting and the war. 175 regiments, probably 180,000 men, more than that. I would think more than that. Where they constituted 10% of the entire Union Army. Next thing you know, we're on a steamer again, and we're going down the river. We goes all the way down the river to a place in Florida, a place called Lusty, Florida. James Elbert was at the Battle of Lusty. He survived that battle, which had heavy casualties. The African-American casualties were much more than the white casualties per capita, something like 15% more. Then he was taken back to Petersburg, where the siege was going on of the Confederate capital. And he was involved in another desperate encounter, Battle of Darby Town Road. And there he was wounded. The fighting is heavy, and it's damp and wet. And we back and forth in the shooting, back and forth in the shooting, fighting. 
And the next thing you know, boom, I get wounded and the darkness is coming over me. He was shot to the side and the bullet went up through his chest and out, which was good. And uh, he was uh, bothered by that all the rest of the war and probably the rest of his life. The United States colored troops fought bravely in the brutal battles that continued until the war finally ended in May of 1865. More than a quarter of injured Civil War soldiers died from their wounds, even more from disease. Private James Elbert somehow survived his wounding, but misunderstood a directive telling him to go home and recover. I came out of the hospital. The doctor gave me a piece of paper, told me to sign off on it. He should have read it to me because what the paper said was to go home, Private Elbert and get well. But by home, he meant back to my company. Home to me was home. <laughs> and don't you know, I went all the way back to Delaware City and Polk Town. It caused me to be arrested because they thought I was a deserter. And there I was, minding my business, still had on my Uniform, like Kepi, walking down the pike, and I heard this boogity, 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 and I looked around, and there was this fellow on this tall horse looking at me, and he had this pistol pointed right at me. He said, Private Elbert. He knew it was me because I had the uniform on. I said, yes, sir. He said, don't move. And I looked at him. He put the pistol in his holster, got down off that horse, went into his saddlebags, and came out with this long, long, long chain with shackles on it and put them on me. He was illiterate, he couldn't understand, he thought he was to stay home. No, you'd go home after a certain period of time and come back. Well, he didn't come back, so they went after him, grabbed him, took him to Virginia. They had a trial. He was freed, he was not guilty on desertion, and that's a serious charge. But he was guilty for leaving his company. But he didn't have any malice. The, he didn't leave during battle. So the judge took that all into consideration. So then he went back to his company. He was uh, restored to duty. And by that time, it was pretty much the end of the war and he never fought another battle. Next thing we know, he's back in Philadelphia where he's discharged. And that, that's where he escapes historical scrutiny. As long as he was a soldier, we can put our hands and eyes on him. All the people of Polktown didn't have that. So what do we know about them? What do we know about the ordinary people in, this, in that period, white or black, very little. And we know he died in the 1890s because somebody ordered the stone in 1890-something. I was 42 years old when I died, and he buried me right there on the branch canal. The whole effect is one of respect and instills dignity and the passing of time and the memory of time. And so the community of Polktown, the people of Polktown, will be remembered by this through every visitor's experience here at the cemetery. Storyteller Willis Phelps remains dedicated to sharing the story of Private James Elbert. Saving the history for future generations. I just feel like it's something that I need to continue to do 
and I will continue as long as I'm able. <laughs> I, it, 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 it's, it, it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful piece of thing for me. It makes me, sometimes I can just go to sleep and feel good. <laughs> Research into the community of Polktown continues, with Polktown descendants helping to keep the story alive. Now, see, I never knew the bridge when the um, boards weren't on. I remember when it was abandoned and we used to run through it all the time. <laughs> so she lived, she lived in one spot and right next to him was the Henrys, right? Mm -hmm. The Union forever, hoorah, boys, hoorah. Down with the traitors, up with the stars, and we'll rally once again, boys, we'll rally once again. Singing the battle cry of freedom. Singing the battle cry of freedom. <laughs>